that uh, you can see the screen which I have shared with you. So if we can quickly recap which we discussed in the last class, we started with the uh, with the fluid element kin kinematics, and uh, in that we discussed that there are four types of formation of a fluid element when it uh, flows through uh, through the any flow. So these four types of deformations uh, uh, are uh, number one, translation. Then, then we have got a linear deformation, then rotation, and, and the last one is the angular deformation. So in translation, uh, translation and rotation, they are rigid body motion. And in this, uh, the shape and volume does not change, uh, but in the linear deformation, the volume changes, and in angular deformation, uh, shape changes. And uh, for the translation, there is no velocity gradient. Uh, it means that uh, within the element, so it means that uh, the element has got the same velocity at each point. Uh, while for the linear deformation, as we discussed in the last class, that uh, uh, we need some normal velocity gradient. So, uh, uh, if I let me open the whiteboard and then we can. So, uh, this was just the recap. So, So normal velocity gradients they are partial u by partial x, partial v by partial y, and partial w by partial z. While the tangential velocity gradients. They are they are three normal velocity gradient and six tangential velocity gradient. Like partial u by partial y, partial u by partial v, partial v by partial x, partial v by partial y, and partial w by partial x and partial w by partial y. So for the linear deformation, the necessary condition is that we need to have uh, normal velocity gradient. And for the rotation and angular formation, we need to have tangential velocity gradient. So uh, if you remember that in the last class, uh, we discussed about the, uh, the volumetric dilation rate, change in uh, volumetric dilation rate, which is the rate of change of volume per unit volume in the all three directions. So we noted that that uh, uh, volumetric dilation rate is partial u by partial x plus partial v by partial y plus partial w by partial z. And uh, then afterwards, uh, we noted that uh, that for the incompressible flow, the volumetric dilation rate is zero because there is no change in density. So it means that it's the density cannot change, so then the volume cannot also change because the total mass would remain the same. So mass is the product of volume into density. So if the density is not changing, so volume cannot change. So it means that for the liquid, we usually say that volumetric dilation rate is equal to zero. But for the gases, because they are compressible, so in that case, we have got non-zero volumetric dilation. 
afterwards we discussed about the uh, rotation that how we can find the rotation for a fluid element for that as i told you just now that tangential velocity gradient needs to be there so in this case we have got uh, tangential velocity gradient like partial v by partial x as i am showing with the mouse cursor and then partial u by partial y so if you can see that one angle is uh, this delta alpha that is counter clockwise and delta beta is clockwise rotation so if we calculate the value of uh, uh, the angular velocity that uh, after doing some mathematical manipulation it comes out to be partial v by partial x as we as we discussed this thing on whiteboard in the last class and then similarly the angular velocity for line ob that comes out to be equal to partial u by partial y so the rotation of the element about the z axis is the average of the angular velocity so if we take the uh, now because uh, these two are uh, in different directions one is counter clockwise which is delta alpha and the uh, delta beta is the clockwise direction so we are taking counter clockwise as a positive uh, positive direction and then we add them so because uh, partial u by partial y is clockwise so it has been added as negative so mega that comes out to be 1 by 2 partial v by partial x minus partial u by partial y so it is about the z axis similarly we can find the rotation component about y axis and x axis so if we do that if we follow the same procedure we can find the value of w y and w x so the last thing we discussed in the class uh, that was that that mega vector is mega vector is uh, we can write it mega x i plus mega y j plus mega z k and uh, second thing we discussed that mega is half of curl of velocity field so curl of velocity field as i mentioned in the last class uh, that is very easy to, to derive that is equal to half into i j k partial by partial s partial by partial y partial by partial z and u v w so if we expand it we can easily write 1 by 2 into partial w by partial y minus partial v by partial and so it is a kind of determinant so we can write it like this i plus it would be partial partial uh, for the y it would be partial u by partial z minus partial w by partial x j component plus half into partial partial v by partial x minus partial u by partial y so this is k component so it means that this component is wx this component is wy and this component is wz so is there any question up to this point any query okay so it seems that uh, everything is clear so that is very promising so uh, now uh, if we write the formula for w z here w 
W uh, W dead is equal to partial B by partial X minus partial U by partial Y. So it would be if we want to have zero rotation. So in that case, W Z would be equal to zero, and we can write. For uh, uh, zero rotation, we can add W Z is equal to zero, and in that case, partial V by partial X is equal to partial U by partial Y. So, uh, if I show you on the uh, slide, that what it, it means that partial U by partial uh, partial U by partial Y is equal to partial V by partial X. So, it means that. If we have got partial V by partial X in counterclockwise, then the same counterclockwise distance would be there for the uh, partial U by partial Y. So uh, on the whiteboard, we can show it by. On the best line. So it means that we mean to say that we can have something like this. So it means that this is also delta alpha is uh, delta alpha is also uh, counterclockwise and delta beta is also counterclockwise. So it means that now the fluid element has been rotated. Uh, without uh, having any any kind of uh, any kind of uh, deformity, so it has been rotated as uh, as a rigid body. So it means that uh, okay. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention that vorticity, which is the characteristic of flow field, that is twice the uh, Two multiplied by the rotation vector, so it tells about the rotational characteristics of a fluid. So now we need to discuss about pure rotation and pure angular deformation. So as I have discussed that uh, in case of rotation without angular deformation, partial u by partial x would be equal to minus partial v by partial x. So it means that if this is going this way, it should also go. This way, so partial u by partial y should be equal to minus partial v by partial x because here partial v by partial x is shown in the clockwise direction. So in order to have rigid body motion, it should have negative value because it means that it should go in the uh, in the clockwise in the counterclockwise direction as I shown on the whiteboard. Secondly, if we want to have Angular deformation without ro rotation. So, without rotation means that uh, uh, without rotation means that we have got this uh, W that is equal to zero. In that case, partial V by partial X would be partial equal to partial U by partial Y. What does it mean? That the uh, element has not been ro rotated about. <laughs> जी कभी सर मीडियम हो जाती है कभी ऊंची हो जाती है सर कभी स्लो होती है कभी हाई हो जाती है ओके ओके आई वुड मे बी आई वुड सी टू दैट सो इज इट ओके नाउ एट द मोमेंट कैन यू प्लीज कंफर्म नो सर यस सर अब ठीक है सर बिल्कुल बिल्कुल क्लियर नहीं आती सर बेटर Lecture. So, Sir, just... I think the issue is not with the network. I think uh, we are not getting you clearly. So there is no clarity in the voice, I guess. Okay. So what should I do? What do you recommend? 
that is a question sir but don't know what yes sir channel you are saying that uh, my voice is not clear is it not audible or you cannot understand it sir sometimes it becomes low sometimes it, it becomes uh, high it's it just fluctuates and uh, it's quite difficult to understand okay uh, is it uh, all right at the moment nishan ali can you hear me nishan yes sir it's it's quite better now okay maybe i would hold this uh, uh, this uh, microphone uh, in my hand so it would be better so the, if it gets low again gets low again then please do let me know so uh, in the meanwhile we continue with the lecture right so uh, i we were talking about let me repeat it that uh, rotation without angular deformation occurs when partial u by partial y is equal to minus partial v by partial x it means that this ob line ob the prime line it should be on this side so it means that uh, delta alpha and delta beta should be in counter clockwise direction because here delta alpha is in the uh, counter clockwise direction and this delta beta is uh, in the clockwise direction so if we can make it in, in the counter clockwise direction as i shown on the white board like like this so it means that it means that there is uh, no angular deformation but only rotation about its axis which is at this point uh, which i am showing with mouse cursor okay second point uh, that is the angular deformation without rotation it means that there is no net rotation of the element but only change in shape so that can only occur when we have got zero rotation so zero rotation would occur if we go back in this formula when would zero rotation occur when wz is equal to zero which means partial b by partial x is equal to partial u by partial y so in this figure if delta alpha is equal to delta beta so because delta alpha is counter clockwise uh, counter clockwise delta beta is clockwise so it means that uh, if we add them the result would be equal to zero so if that is the case then we would have angular deformation without rotation nishan ali uh, can you hear my voice now clearly just to yes. confirm okay. yes sir yes sir okay thank you so uh, now if we want to have both phenomena in which there is rotation as well as angular deformation then if partial u by partial y is not equal to partial v by partial x then we would have simultaneously rotation as well as angular deformation so in case when corresponding tangential velocity gradients for a rotation vector are unequal it means that partial u by partial y is not equal to partial v by partial x both angular deformation and rotation occurs in z x more generally if uh, curl of velocity field is equal to zero then the rotation uh, rotation and the vorticity are zero and the flow field for which this condition applies they are termed as irrotational so if you remember the assumption of bernoulli equation which we which you discussed in chapter number i think 3 uh, in your fm1 so one condition for the applicability of that bernoulli equation was uh, that the flow should be irrotational so uh, now uh, maybe you can understand it better that what it means to be uh, irrotational when we have curl of velocity field is equal to zero and other assumption for the the uh, bernoulli equation was steady flow and uh, incompressible flow and the flow should be along a streamline so uh, now th uh, the last concept here is rate of uh, rate of uh, uh, changing strain so we can uh, determine the change in the original right angle 
so if we want to know that uh, how much shape has been changed then we can uh, say that we can add delta alpha plus delta beta to get the uh, change in the original right angle or original shape of the element and that would be equal to delta alpha plus delta beta so if delta alpha is is equal to minus delta beta which is the case which is shown here then uh, we would have uh, if delta alpha is equal to minus delta beta then it would be shading strain is, is equal to zero so uh, that would be the case when uh, there would be uh, there would be gradient in this direction which means that we are talking about pure rotation right so uh, we can get uh, the value of uh, rate of shading strain that would be equal to partial v by partial x plus partial u by partial y and uh, that would be uh, if we put uh, this shading strain is equal to zero then uh, the condition would be partial v by partial x is equal to minus partial v by partial x so uh, partial u by partial y is equal to minus partial v by partial x it means that for this case we are talking about pure rotation so shading strain zero means that there is no change in the shape of the body so it is only rotating there uh, rotating about the axis pure rotation and that would be only the case when we have got this uh, this partial v by partial x on the this side so it means that uh, it is kind of rigid body rotation now we can have any theory if you if you have got anything which you couldn't understand in these four types of deformations then you can ask me now otherwise we can continue with uh, some numerical problems for uh, these four cases vishanali everything clear yes sir okay sarosh so, ka yes sir please question. ask no no please ask don't be shy if you have got any question you are free to ask at any time sir wo yes ji sir ra ne pucha tha sir wo dishan ali ne message kiya tha pehle mujhe ke na mera wo mic nahi ja raha sahi to मैं उसकी तरह से रिप्लाई देने लगा था उसका शायद ठीक हो गया होगा ठीक है जी थैंक यू वेरी मच आपका क्या नाम है बेटा सर उमर ओके सो प्लीज व्हेनेवर यू वांट टू आस्क एनीथिंग आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट दैट प्लीज स्टेट योर नेम फर्स्ट सो दैट आई कैन इंटरेक्ट विद यू आई कैन स्पीक विद यू डायरेक्टली सो दैट वुड बी बेटर फॉर द कम्युनिकेशन परपस थैंक यू वेरी मच ओके सो इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दीस फोर टाइप्स ऑफ rotations or deformations then we can so these are the four uh, deformation just to summarize translation linear deformation rotation and angular deformation so just to make sure that we are on the same page translation and rotation they are rigid body motion there is no change in uh, volume or shape of the element but for the linear deformation there is change in volume but there is no change in shape but for the angular deformation there is no change in volume uh, but there is change in shape okay so now we uh, go towards a uh, few medical problems which uh, we can see that uh, to see that whether the flow is having some kind of uh, deformation linear deformation rotation or uh, angular deformation so let me go to the okay so uh, uh, this is the first problem here we have got uh, uh, here we have got uh, the three components of velocity in a in a flow field so u is equal to x square plus y square plus z square so let me write it u is equal to x square plus y square plus z square and then we have got v is equal to x y plus y v plus z square
xy plus yv plus z squared and then w is equal to uh, let me write it z squared okay and w is equal to minus 3x z minus z squared by 2 plus 4 minus 3x z 3xz minus z squared by 2 plus 4. Okay, so the uh, this is the velocities in a given flow phase. So first of all, we need to determine the volumetric dilation rate for this uh, uh, for this uh, flow phase. So volumetric dilation rate, if you remember that that was equal to that was equal to del dot v sir ye aapne sir u v aur w ke sath jo equations likhi hain सही हम ड्राइव करेंगे का इनको बस याद करना दोबारा बताइए ये वाली जो आपने बेटा ये अगर आप देखें ना और से ये क्वेश्चन की स्टेटमेंट में गिवन है उमेर इज इट उमेर यस सर उमेर ये देखें ना क्वेश्चन की स्टेटमेंट में ये ये जो U V और W की ये जो है ये फार्मूला गिवन है ना ये आपको गिवन होंगे यस सर मैं था ऊपर स्टेटमेंट है मुझे पता चल जाता इसलिए वो मुझे यस नो दैट्स फाइन देयर इज नो नीड टू अपोलोजाइज इवन इफ यू आस्क सम वेरी वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन दिस इज योर राइट यू कैन आस्क ऑल वे सो डोंट बी अपोलोजेटिक इन एनी वे नो देयर इज नो नीड टू बी ओके सो डेल डॉट वी इज इक्वल टू पार्शियल यू बाई पार्शियल एक्स प्लस पार्शियल बी बाय पार्शियल वाई प्लस पार्शियल डब्ल्यू बाय पार्शियल जेड नाउ इफ वी काइंड ऑफ इफ वी कैन फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ पार्शियल यू बाय पार्शियल एक्स फ्रॉम द टॉप इक्वेशन डेट वुड बी इक्वल टू डेट वुड बी इक्वल टू टू एक्स Plus partial b by partial y that would be equal to if we take the uh, derivative with respect to y that would be equal to x plus z plus uh, there is some distortion in y. Uh, do you want to add anything? That would be equal to partial W by partial V would be equal to minus three x minus z, right? So I hope that uh, you understand that how we have done this, uh, uh, how we have written partial U by partial x. We have kind of uh, just uh, taking the uh, derivative and put the values here. So. Uh, now because if you kind of simplify it that would be equal to 3x plus z minus 3x minus z so this would be cancelled so volumetric dilation rate is equal to zero which means that this flow is incompressible this flow field is incompressible because the volumetric dilation rate is equal to zero now the uh, second thing which we want to determine here that is the expression for the rotation vector so we need to find the expression for the rotation vector so for the rotation vector we know that uh, for the w first of all we write the expression for the wx so uh, let me do it somewhere here W uh, W X would be equal to 
वन बाय टू वन बाय टू पार्शल डब्ल्यू बाय पार्शल बाय माइनस पार्शल बी बाय पार्शल डेट Now, if we see partial W by partial y, that would be equal to partial W by partial y would be equal to zero. So that would be zero minus partial B by partial z. It would be equal to y plus two z. Similarly, W y that would be equal to Half into partial u by partial that minus partial w by partial x. So that would be equal to half into. If we take partial u by partial that, that would be equal to two z. Partial u by partial z and partial w by partial x that would be equal to zero. I hope that you understand this. Okay. Uh, partial w by partial x not zero. It should be just minus three. Minus zero. It shouldn't be zero. And it would be minus three three z. Uh, I didn't. See that x there, so uh, it should be uh, minus three z. Uh, someone has rightly pointed out. Similarly, we can find w z w z that would be equal to half into partial z by partial x minus partial u by partial y. So that is equal to half into partial b by partial x. That would be equal to y, and partial u by partial y would be equal to minus two y. Right. So we can write uh, now. We can see that uh, uh, I have to go uh, down. So we can write uh, this. Sir. Yes. I think in w y me, our two z plus three z will come. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Uh, w by me, because minus partial W by partial X. Hai. You are talking about W by. Yes, sir. W by me, partial W by partial X. Yes, it should be plus. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, it is minus, so minus into minus would be plus. Thank you. Maybe you can mute your mic. For the time being, if you can mute your mic, it would be good. So, uh, uh, who was that who pointed out this? Please state your name so I can also get to know your names as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, we understand this is not the ideal way of. Learning, but we need to get through this. We would. Okay, so if we if we can write the uh, rotation vector here, that would be equal to uh, W would be equal to W X I plus W Y K plus W Z K. Right. So uh, W X value was equal to minus. Y by two plus V I plus five Z by two J plus oh sorry it should be minus here minus Y by two K. So this is the rotation vector. So it means that the flow field is incompressible, but it is not uh, irrotational because uh, the uh, rotation vector is not equal to zero. So, so the flow field is irrotational. 
uh, it is rotational basically the flow field uh, we can write that is it is rotational flow field okay so uh, this was the first numerical now we can do the second numerical that is an incompressible viscous fluid is placed between two large parallel plates the bottom plate is fixed and the upper plate moves with the constant velocity u so it means that the uh, that the upper upper plate is moving with the constant velocity u for those conditions the velocity distribution between the plates is linear and can be expressed as uh, u as a function of y that uh, is equal to u into y upon v v is the uh, v is the distance between these two plates and y is the vertical distance starting from the bottom plate so if you put y is equal to 0 at the bottom plate the velocity would be equal to 0 and when you put y is equal to b which is the distance between the plate the surface uh, the value of velocity at the uh, at the top plate would be equal to uh, capital u so this kind of flow is called poet flow and we we are going to discuss this flow at the end of this chapter in detail after the derivation of linear flow equation and uh, uh, this is the flow which usually happened in uh, all the uh, bearings uh, which are uh, installed in our turbo machinery so in bearing one the inner inner uh, cylinder is or the inner uh, ring is attached with the shock and the outer ring is uh, moving with the uh, with the rotor so uh, that is the uh, practical application of this uh, flow uh, and we call it poet flow and we are going to discuss it at the end of this chapter also so in this now we need to calculate the volumetric dilation rate so let's do it on the whiteboard The velocity is given, velocity vector is, is given as, as it is equal to uh, y upon b u which is uh, in x plus 0 a plus 0 k. It means that there is no vertical ball normal velocity or into the board velocity so v and w velocity they are equal to zero only u velocity is non-zero which is given by a, a y upon v into u anything you want to add hassan no sir clear okay so because some someone unmuted the mic so i, I just thought that someone wants to add something so now we need to find the volumetric dilation rate here so for this first of all volumetric dilation rate that would be equal to that would be in this case it would be partial u by partial x plus partial v by partial y plus partial w by partial z so we know that v and w they are already zero so no need to calculate those gradients if we calculate partial u by partial x that is also equal to zero because there is no x term in the u velocity which is y upon v into capital u so it means volumetric dilation rate is equal to zero and then we have uh, this was the first part which was quite easy and then the second part is the rotation vector so in this the rotation vector would be only in the uh, about v direction so it means because x and y would be equal to zero so we can find the rotation vector so if we find the rotation about v so wz would be equal to because it is kind of two dimension flow so uh, it would be half into partial v by partial x minus partial u by partial y 
So partial v by partial x is equal to zero here, and partial u by partial y would be equal to u upon v. So we can write minus u upon upon two b w b. So uh, rotation vector would be equal to zero i plus zero j. There is no rotation in x and y, and in in for the v direction it would be minus u upon two b k. Right. So I have just written zero i plus zero j just to emphasize that w x and w y component they are equal to zero because it is two dimensional flow, so the rotation can only occur in the z about the z z axis. So this was the second thing, and then we need to find the vorticity. So we know that vorticity is the uh, is the double of so vorticity that is shown by this symbol that we equal to two into omega. So it would be equal to minus u upon b k, and then uh, vorticity. After that, we need to find Uh, the shading state, rate of angular deformation, which is the shading state in this case, so that would be equal to omega, and it would be equal to partial v by partial x plus partial u by partial y. So, if you are wondering that from where we have written this equation, so if we go back here. This one rate of steady strain or rate of deformation. We also call it rate of deformation. That is partial v by partial x plus partial u by partial y. So it is only in the about the z x z x is at the moment. So we can also find the rate of steady strain about x axis and y axis. Similarly, as we did for the rotation vector. So if we try to find that. So partial v by partial x that would be equal to zero, and partial u by partial y that would be equal to uh, u upon v. So we have uh, found the uh, rate of uh, rate of deformation uh, angular deformation here. It is vorticity. This is vorticity. This is uh, rate of angular. Deformation. This is rotation vector. And then the last one is the first one was uh, dilation, volumetric dilation rate. Volumetric. Dilation rate. So uh, this was uh, all about uh, this topic. Now we are going to start deriving the uh, Navier-Stokes equation, which is the set of continuity uh, momentum and energy equation. So first of all, we would apply the conservation of uh, mass principle to the system. So Uh, okay, before we do that, there are some homework problems from Munson book, which are 6.2, 6.3, 6.6, 6.8, and 6.10. Please uh, have a look at these problems at your own time and uh, try to solve them. Uh, if you have got the manual, and uh, then we can discuss if you have got any query with those problems. So these are the minimum number of problems which you need to do it at your own time. And understand these problems so that it can give you the complete knowledge of uh, this topic. Now we are going to discuss the derivation of Navier-Stokes equations, which are uh, usually the governing equations for the uh, for the viscous uh, viscous uh, incompressible uh, unsteady uh, flow field. So that is the most realistic thing we can have for the subsonic flows. So 
uh, we start with the conservation of mass. So in the Cartesian coordinate, we are going to drive it. So we can send it to the cylindrical polar coordinates as well for some other proceeds. But we would start it with the Cartesian coordinate. So if you know that conservation of mass principle, that is the mass of the system remains constant. So it means that mass cannot be created nor it can be destroyed. So we know it from thermodynamics as well. So a system moves through the flow field. So we write dm of system by dt is equal to zero. So if you remember that you have learned the concept of extensive property and intensive property. Is that right? What is extensive property? So extensive property yeah, depends on mass. On mass. So it means that if I write mass, that is the uh, one example of mass that is represented with uh, the symbol M. So that is the uh, example of extensive property. So what would be the intensive property in this case for mass? If capital B is mass, so small b, which is intensive property that would be divided by mass, that would be equal to 1, right? So for the mass, the intensive property would be 1. Because uh, intensive property that is independent of mass, so it means that we need to divide it by mass, so it becomes equal to 1. So because uh, uh, we have uh, just mentioned that from the conservation of mass principle, DM system by DT is equal to zero, right? So now because we cannot apply this on a system because we have to follow all the particles. So uh, it is better that we kind of create, uh, fix a volume in space and then we study that how the mass uh, goes through that controlled volume. So it means that we need to make use of that uh, that uh, Reynolds transport theorem. So uh, that transport theorem, if you remember, that is equal to dB by dt is equal to partial rho by partial t control volume into rho rho b dB plus control surface and rho b v dot n dA, right? So as I mentioned here that uh, capital B in this case is, oh, sorry, that is equal to mass of the system. So I'm going to replace that here. That is equal to mass. And uh, this uh, B, for this case, it would be 1. Here, it should always be 1. Okay, so now we are going to take a differential control volume and apply it there. So, if I draw a differential control volume here, So this is our uh, cubic type of uh, control volume. So in this, we know that this is x direction, this is y direction, and this is uh, out of the board, that is z direction, right? So if we have got the property is known at the center, that is at the center of the cube, if those, uh, that property is rho into u, because here, rho into u would be the uh, property which is going out and into the system. If this distance is, 
delta x this distance that is delta y and this distance that is del v okay so if the property value at the center would be del u what would be the property here at the left face and the right face anyone what would be the value at the right face or the left face because we did it uh, in the previous uh, lecture by by the use of taylor series so if i kind of write it here that would be it would be rho u plus partial by partial x rho u into del x by 2 and if we want to calculate the uh, because we know that mass flow rate is rho rho v into area area is the perpendicular area through which it flows so for this it would be del v into del y and why there is del, del x by 2 because the distance between this point and the right face that is equal to that is equal to del uh, del x by 2 so i uh, i think uh, the time is over for this class is that right yeah. what is the time time for this class to be over i think it is uh, 10 25 so let me uh, i think we keep our discussion up to this point and we would start from here in the next class right so thank you for your let me download the attendance so i have downloaded the attendance and uh, uh, i would see you uh, in next uh, class which is going to occur next week so i would share the lecture slides with us yes, recording stop kar de so i would i would 